68, 75, 69, 75, we sold again into that uh, that passive lean. And uh, you can see we've had a reasonable sell off from that point onwards. Came off the uh, RGL from last night's uh, 57s buy side and that uh, pops up from that price. Going backwards, we can see that we got a max sell. It's not the clearest. I'm going to get them to change the color of this one. It is actually solid yellow. Uh, not that you would know it uh, from your screens. It's probably almost invisible. And uh, we've got um, we've got a perfect example of a top line sell side business, a passive sell as well. We got a pretty good to a five hundred dollar winner right there, which is pretty good. Happy enough with that five hundred dollar winner, that's for sure. So that was a two out of two max sells, two out of two so far. As we scroll backwards, we got another max sell just here. And uh, you can see that, uh, again, it just uh, made landfall at the bottom edges. So the three out of three winners, three out of three winners at that stage. The next one was a, was a small winner and a scratch. Um, and you can see it came in actually over here. So we got the buy trade on, but we never got the lean. This is one that happened as I was in the classroom at the time. We never got the lean. So we finally got the lean here. So we got a, a buy trade that finally did win some money, but it did scratch out again after that. So that's a five out of five. Five out of five so far with very little drawdown. Five out of five. We'll scroll backwards and see what else we had. We had other ones, didn't we? Five out of five. Oh, yeah. It was this big sell. I knew we had another one. There it is there. So with this big sell at the top edge, you can see the max on the far left hand side of your screens. You can see it went solid red just there. We got a passive sell at the uh, four ticks higher as well. And uh, there it is. Look at that sell, guys. That one went from uh, fives to a low price of 82s. So that gave us $1,000 for a six out of six winners today. Six out of six winners. That was the biggest one by a mile. Um, $1,000, as I said, banked uh, from that sell trade, which was beautiful. So six out of six winners today, which is um, just pretty good going, if I must say so myself. Sell side has gone nicely to the downside there. We've just broken nicely on that sell. So we've just uh, made measure on that original max. And uh, you can see we've just made measure on that trade there. So a nice opportunity to bank uh, some lovelies. And uh, we've just went from a nice price there of that 70s uh, to 62 is eight points four hundred dollars another winning trade for the bull boy so that's nice let's get through the numbers so very much like uh, yesterday's numbers um just a miserable looking backdrop isn't it to go come into your markets with a miserable looking backdrop where we've got uh, german wpis missing at uh, one percent against 2.2 average earnings in the uk was forecast at 7.2%, came in at 68 The claimant count was expected to drop by 40,000. It dropped by 19,000. And the unemployment rate, which they had expected to drop down to 3.6, actually increased to 3.8. Uh, so pretty just it's just dominated by red numbers just now, isn't it? It's just literally everywhere we look just now is just red, 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 red. So. Um, that is what it is. Sell side sterling obviously made an awful lot of sense at that stage, bearing in mind these numbers were out at seven o'clock this morning. Uh, you had uh, plenty of opportunities to start doing some dollar trades against the pound here. Seven o'clock this morning, guys. Seven o'clock, those miserable numbers. Take a look. So at seven o'clock, you now know those numbers. Does anybody see a possible trade? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Uh, what's wrong with that level two liquidity? Nothing, right? Nothing. There is nothing wrong with that level two liquidity. What else do you see at that same time? Massive delta divergence. So obviously that sell liquidity just in here. You can see we've ran the stops against this level here. And obviously we didn't quite take out the prior highs when we got the sell off from the UK numbers. But my goodness, I mean, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? How easy it is to make money on the, the, um, on the pound here. And uh, from that sell, we started to lose the delta selling. 
but uh, I don't I don't want to be long sterling because uh, because the numbers we've seen in the last two days are pretty rubbish. And if anything, it might start uh, just tapering back some of the Bank of England's uh, rhetoric. So for me, it's uh, sell side, sell side only. I'm not interested in buying. But obviously, when I started to see the delta coming off this trade at the bottom edge, uh, buyers coming in a little bit too soon, squeezing those buyers lower. And for me, it was very simply a case of uh, saying thank you. And uh, as the price breaks lower, just take, using that excuse to take some money. And as it breaks lower, using that excuse to take some money and closing out what was pretty obviously um, the easiest trade of the day. So we went from a high price of 22 evens, and by the time we finished, we were below 21 evens for 120 pips. Is that not the easiest trade you've ever seen? Bearing in mind that that sell was after the data, not before the data. That sell was on a backdrop of two days of consistently bad numbers. One bad number's a bad number. It can be a throwaway, it can do whatever it wants to do, but this isn't one bad number. This is unemployment numbers that have missed, average earnings numbers that have missed, industrial production numbers that have missed, manufacturing productions that have missed, construction spending which has missed, goods trade balance numbers that's missed, it, GDP numbers that have missed in the last 48 hours. You tell me whether sterling's a buy or sell. Well, it's not a buy, is it? It's not a buy. So what should we be doing? Selling the pound against the dollar. Why should we be selling the pound against the dollar? Because obviously with the weakness in equities, we want to be long dollars. So because of the weakness in equities, we want to be long dollars. And obviously this, the, um, the, the, the uh, very, very, very obvious weakness in, this, in the, uh, the UK numbers, we definitely want to be short sterling. Definitely want to be short sterling. And we had the chance to do it. This number came out, as I said, at seven o'clock. The trade took place at half past eight. The delta was already selling. They didn't puke. Even if we went into those higher prices, they didn't puke their positions. This was tailor-made for anybody with an ounce of common sense to just press the button and take advantage of what was the easiest trade of the whole morning session. I, I say that there was a very easy trade on bonds today as well, but uh, you know that's a separate, a separate market. But certainly, in terms of Forex, if you couldn't get that pound on the, the market this morning, my goodness, you must be uh, losing your mind about how simple that trade was. It's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Um, this afternoon, we do have a very, very big uh, release coming out in just 13 minutes. It's, uh, you've got to be ultra mega careful with this. It is the PPI numbers, of course. And uh, PPI numbers are uh, part of the inflation consideration by the Fed. Uh, they are forecast to come out at 0.8% against a prior of 0.5. Core is expected to go up to 0.6 from 0.4. So bear that in mind, guys. Bear that in mind. Another hot print. Oh, then we go again. We go again, guys. Another possible bond short. Uh, another possible equity short. A, a, a reasonable print in line with expectations, perhaps even a little bit softer, we might be able to see a bit of a reprieve, equities catching a bid, and uh, and bonds taking a little bit of a bid as well. So something I am very, very mindful of. We're going to be ready to go with this trade, and uh, I will trade this one as a volatility if we do get a, a, a divergence in this, because it's just the, the kicking that uh, the market just doesn't need just now if it does come in a little bit hotter. So let's get ready, guys. If it spikes and gets absorbed, that's also a very, very good signal that the buyers are buying equities at lower prices. So in other words, if we come in with a hot PPI number and the equities sell off and it gets absorbed almost immediately, that's a very strong sign to get ready to buy any pullbacks into the S&P as well. So we're ready to trade. It's coming out in just uh, 10 minutes and I will be getting on my desk for that and I'll be back uh, shortly, guys. By the way, I am currently...